Welcome back ladies, in this video I will be installing a Dakota Digital Dash for an 87 Camaro and this is what it comes with it comes with the dash itself, the cluster fittings over here, adapters for the sending units and all that stuff to make it work the ECU and this I downloaded off their website and this is the VHX-82C-CAM model number so let's begin first thing we're gonna do is take these T15 Torx headed screws off all around this dash over here so we're going to take all these out screw comes right off. Now there's a 10 millimeter speed nut in there. Go ahead and take that off. And one more in here. And this one as you're unscrewing it, you could just pop it off like that, pull on it and it pops right off. Okay, now there's a 930 seconds bolt and it holds this little piece here. Take that off. Alright, now I'm behind the dash over here. As you can see, my screwdriver. What's holding this in place is this speedometer cable. So if I could just go in there with a flathead and see if I could. What you gotta do is you gotta push that clip in and pop that cable out. Let's see, I think I got it. Right there. Okay, so that's how that pops out. We're gonna use an electric signal on the VSS, so this cable's garbage anyway. And that's how it clips into here, the dash, and there's one on this side too. So let me show you now when I take this dash off. Okay, so this little thing comes right out. Okay, so this is what we're left with on a dash. A speedometer cable. That's the clips in there. And what I did was over here to get the speedometer cable off, I pushed this in and then popped this out with the flathead. Okay, now the only thing we're going to reuse is this from the stock cluster. So you turn this around. You pop these out. And same thing on the other side. Okay, now they provide you with these lenses. And these go in here, where you took off the old ones. like that. Okay now put this one in. Now this one doesn't click in there but you see these two pins here? These are gonna go in here so it's gonna hold it in place. So I'm not worried about that. Next thing is these indicator light lenses also I'm taking off and we're also taking off this. Okay, now you can pop this on. Be careful you don't scratch the lens. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay, now we're going to connect the left turn signal and the right turn signal. Now there's two different ways to doing this. You could use their the Dakota Digital Dash signals or we're gonna, what we're going to do, we're going to use the stock signals here. And to do that, you got to connect this wire here to the back of this right here. 
and you gotta figure out which wires are the left and the right turn signals that go into the stock dash. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna get a test light, put it on a jam switch, just like that. And I'm gonna have the ignition on the on position. And I'm putting the left turn signal on. All you gotta do is go to these connections here and it should be a power wire clicking on and off and nothing nothing and this is it right here it's this terminal right here so I'm gonna cut this wire and put in a left turn signal okay now I'm gonna do the right hand signal and same procedure go through all these until you find which one blinks your test light on and off and that's the third from the left. So now we have the left and the right turn signal terminals. Okay, so this is the right turn signal. I'm gonna probe this underneath and you can just pull it right out. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that right there, and splice it into the harness. Cut that there. Now the white green wire from the wire provi from the wires provided by Decode Digital goes to the right turn signal wire. So put that in there. Tug that and you're good. Now we see a primitive clown using fire. Brianna's amazed. And you're done. On the left is light blue wire, so go ahead and pop that out. Okay, now I'm just going to put this wire connected to the white and black wire, the Decor Digital wire. And we're good. Okay, now we're taking the speedo cable off, the mechanical one, and just unscrew that and pull that out. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna follow this whole mechanical speedo cable until it goes inside the car. And we're just gonna take it apart and pull it out. Okay, now this, they, they supply you this with the kit. This converts the mechanical signal to an electrical signal. So you just put this in there, put it in the hole, and turn that on there. And we're good. Okay, now you put the wire supplied in the kit. Okay, now we're just gonna zip tie these here and follow these rails up. All right, so this is how we're routing it. We're gonna, we're putting this through where the, the old speedometer cable went over there, through there. So we're just gonna pull it up in there and we're gonna put it inside the engine bay. I'll show, what we did. I'll show you how we pulled out the old uh, speedometer cable from the engine bay. All right, so we did, we just cut this over here, we yanked it out, and this came out of the inside too. And this is two piece. So, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna cut this and we're gonna reuse this grommet. And the cable here, we pulled it up and we're gonna run this inside the car through this hole that we took this out of. Okay, now for the old pressure sender, this, this is what they supply you with. What I'm going to do is, I'm not going to go um, on top where the sender is, where the distributor is, because we just put a high stealth ram in there and there's a bunch of stuff going over there and it's, it's a mess up there. So what we're going to do instead, we're going to leave that up there. We're going to go here above the oil filter. This is the oil pressure switch. This gives power to the oil, to the, sorry, to the fuel pump. Uh, once, to re once this reaches about 4 PSI, it bypasses the fuel pump relay and it gets power from here. So if your relay goes bad while you're driving, your fuel pump relay, this supplies power to the fuel pump. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this out. And now I'm going to grab a pair of channel locks 
and take this off. I also put a drip pan underneath to catch a little, little, little bit of excess oil. Okay, so this is the setup we're going to use to put to mount this on top of the oil filter over there. Now they give you a bunch of bushings here, reducer bushings, and also bigger bushings here that you could put, you know, on these sensors. So we're going to do we're going to use this quarter inch over here for this oil pressure sender from uh, Decoder Digital. And we're going to use this T connector, this brass T quarter inch. And this is the part number, it's Watts, part number L LFA-730. You could get that from Home Depot or um, Lowe's or Ace, wherever hardware store you like to go to. Uh, the other thing here is we've got a nipple, a brass nipple. It's a quarter inch nipple. And this is uh, two inches. And this is the part number for that, LFA-742. And we're going to put the oil pressure switch over there. So I'm going to show you now how it's going to look on the car before I put it on there. Okay, it's going to look just like this. So we're going to go ahead and start putting Teflon tape on this and assembling it together. Now I'm going to put some Teflon tape on this brass nipple. Anytime I put something in the oil galley of the block, I like to put Teflon tape on it. If it's going to coolant passage, I usually put paste on it. Because you don't want any paste going inside the passage of the oil galleys because it might clog something up. So, and I also start a couple threads up. Also, again, I don't want any Teflon tape to go into the oil galley passageway. And another thing here is always go clockwise with this, with the Teflon tape when you're putting it on. Because it should be the same way as when you're screwing it on. So now I'm just going to go ahead and put Teflon tape on all the brass fittings. Okay, now I'm going to put this on here first. That's good. I'll pop this in. And we're good. Now put the switch on top. And we're good. Okay, now put the connector on top here. Okay, so I put the adapter on here, and I just thread this on here. And it's good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, the old pressure sender wire, the harness, I'm going to feed through up here, and make sure it's away from the header. And I just pop this in. And I'm just going to zip tie it there, and we're good. Okay, now this car is three water temperature sending units. One is right there, underneath the header, that's on the driver's side. That is the one that goes inside to the cluster of the gauge for the water temperature. That's the one we're going to remove. It also has one for the computer, and that is that one right there. I actually moved it, it was over there, but we put the Holly Stealth Ram in, so I had to move it over. By the way, for the Holly Stealth Ram, I'm going to put a link in the description below for that video if you want to see it. And the other sending unit is right there on the passenger side of the head. That's for the switch for the cooling fan to turn it on. So I'll be taking the one off that's on the driver's side. Okay, now this one just slides on there. So you can push it off. This actually disintegrated. Okay, that's a 13 16 I'm going to put a wrench on there. I have a drain pan underneath to catch the coolant. Go ahead and loosen this up. I'm going to use this adapter and I'll put some Teflon paste on these threads. And it's good. Use some thread sealant on here. Go ahead and put this on the engine. And it's good. Okay, now put the connector on. It's in. I'm going to zip tight up here. 
All right, we're just going to run the motor and uh, fill up with antifreeze. Uh, I'll, put a I'll put a link in the description below on how to bleed a system, clone system, if you don't know how to do it. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, see the hole right there? That's where the mechanical cable went through the firewall for the speedometer. So it went through this grommet. We're going to reuse this grommet. We're going to put all three wires through it and pull it in into the car. Pop these through the hole. And the last pair of wires. Yeah, baby. Just pull them through. Okay, now we're going to take this whole plastic panel off. These are 9 30 seconds bolts here holding it in. And there should be one there, it's missing. Do the other one here. As you can see, my camera girl stuck her little wee wee, I mean her finger, through the hole over there. So I'm gonna hand her the wires. Are you ready for me, Brianna? Absolutely. All right. Go ahead and grab that. I tape the wires together. She got it. And that's the inside of it coming in underneath the dash. All right, so I put the grommet on right there, and it's close to the hole, and Brianna's inside pulling it in. Go ahead, Brianna, pull it in. Okay. There. So as she pulled it in, the grommet went in place. So that's good. All right, guys, I'm going to show you real quick on how to figure out the wiring on any car if you want to do a decoder digital um, cluster in your car. This is how to figure out the wiring. This I got from alldatadiy.com. It was about 26 bucks for this car for one year. And you get all the wiring diagrams. I'm just going to show you the coolant temperature sender and how to figure this out. So this is it, this is the coolant temperature sender. This is under the cluster, uh, instrument clustered wiring diagrams. And if you follow this wire all the way up, it connects over here. And over here it says number seven. And all this, if you follow this line here, it says C2. C2 stands for connector two. There's two connectors in the car, which I'll show you later. So. That's what gives the coolant temperature gauge its signal here. Now, if you look at here, I also, this I got from actual Google. I just Googled it. Google Images had this. I think Austin Thurgeon had this. I'm not sure, but I think I got it from there. Well, anyway, these are the two connectors in the car. And I already verified this. This actually is correct, but this is for an 86 IROC. We're working on 87 IROC. It's pretty, it's pretty much similar. So here, connector two, number seven, if you look at down number seven here, it's a dark green wire and it says coolant temperature gauge sender. So I'll show you now on the car a different way to figure out if this is the correct wire. Okay, so this is the wire that goes that was going to the coolant temperature sender. And I connected my multimeter on that. One prong goes there. And the multimeter is gonna be on the ohm setting. I'm gonna go inside the car with the other probe. Okay, so that's the driver's side, that's connector two. And that's the connector one on the passenger side. Now this is connector two. As you can see the numbers there, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven at the end. And that seven is a dark green wire. And that should be the temperature sender wire. Okay, now we're gonna ohm test this wire to see if this is the correct wire. Okay, now it's open. There's no uh, continuity between anything. So now if you touch any other wire here, I'm touching all the wires here, the connectors, and there's nothing giving it a reading. Now if I touch number seven here, the last one, right there. So I'm getting a reading. So that means I have continuity in that wire and that's the, the, the correct prong. So if you don't know what coolant sender is the right one that goes to the gauge, that's one way to figure it out. So I'm going to go ahead and start connecting these wires to the brain of the, the Crow Digital Box. 
All right, now to connect the accessory power and the constant power, you go to AutoZone or your parts dealer, you get these uh, inline fuses. This is a 20 amp, and we're putting a 15 amp here. Um, you could put an instruction that says you could go from 5 to 20 amps. And you also need these spade connectors, or a bare one like I have here. Crimp it down, and this goes inside the fuse block. So let me show you how to see if there's constant power or accessory power on the fuse block. Let's put these in. Right, I'm going to use a test light, and I put one end on the jam switch over there, and I'm going to go underneath where the fuse block is. Now there's empty sluts, I mean slots here. You can probe and see which one is constant power with the key in the off position. So now my test light went on, that's constant power. Now if you go to one of these here, I believe this one, now we go ahead and turn the key on, I believe this one should be right there. So that's accessory. I'm gonna put them in there now and put it on the box. Go to box. Now for the constant power, the speed connector on there. Tug, and that's good. I have a 20 amp fuse. Pop that in there. Close that. Twisties. Put a buck connector on it. Pull it. That's good. Crimper down, tug, you're good. Now, heat this up. You're good. Now pop the spade in. And now this one is the accessory on, which is this spot here. Give it a little tug, and that's nice and tight in there. So now we have both constant voltage and accessory on. All right, so, as far as cutting these wires, you got to know where you're going to mount this uh, box. This we're going to mount it under the dash over here. And that panel is going to hide it. So we don't have to cut these wires too long. And what you do here is you, you need a small little screwdriver that could go in here and turn these screws. Now this one here is the constant power. So that goes right here. Just pop it in the hole and turn the screw. You know, wedge it in there. And tug, that's not going anywhere. And this is the accessory power. Give it a little twist. You pop that in there. Tug, and that's not going anywhere. So we have accessory and constant power. Now we can do the ground. Alright, now for the ground. That's a good ground right there. So I'm going to go ahead and put an eyelid on that. Maybe it's the connector when you use the eyelet. And the ground. Tug and you're good. And you're going to see the status light blinks. Now the water temp sensor. You connect these either way, it doesn't matter where you put these wires, as long as one is in a water negative and one is water sender. I'm going to bend these over because they're kind of tiny. So go ahead and connect these in here. I'll put the black one here and the red one here and tie these down. That's good. And that's good. And slight tug and those are good. Now the old pressure sender, there's a bare wire and a black wire that goes to the oil negative and the red and white wire go to the white is oil sender and red is the oil positive so I'm just gonna go and go ahead and do those wow look at that they magically went in there and screwed themselves in and now that's good now here from the speed sensor it's all color coded baby can't be easier than this even this clown could do it then we're, now we're not gonna use the top one that says speed out it's just a speed negative speed sender and a speed positive so they go in like that. Go ahead and put those in. And magically again, they're done. Let's connect the one on the passenger side, number one, two, three, four, which is this one here. And the same way I took uh, these left hand and right hand turn signals off, you just stick the pin in here. I stuck my, um, my test light in there 
and just pop out this pink wire. This is your fuel sending wire. All right, so I put a buck connector there, and this is going to fuel send in the middle. And you're good. We're not going to use the fuel negative or the fuel positive. Now we're going to do dim plus. Now, once this gets a 12 volt signal, the LED backlight will turn on on the decoy digital dash. You basically want, once you start, once you uh, turn these lights on, the parking lights or the headlights, you want 12 volt power over here on the switch. So, if you look at this over here, connected two on the driver's side, number 11 and 12, the two gray wires, it's illumination. So those should be it. So I have my probe on the 11 the test light and the ground on the jam switch. So once I turn the lights on, this should light up. So we're good. We're gonna use that. All right, so I connect that wire to the dim positive. Now the check engine light, it's a brown with a white stripe wire. That's number five on the connector that goes to the passenger side. And that goes straight to the check engine. And that's a ground wire. So I'll go ahead and put that in and tighten that down. Okay, now the brake indicator and the high beam are numbers 10 and 14. 10 being the high beam and 14 being the brake indicator on the driver's side C2 connector. And that's these two here, so I'm just going to put these in and anchor them down. One side note guys, after looking back in the videos, I realized I didn't put this in there. Cloud made a little boo-boo. Anyway, the connector one, the passenger side connector, uh, number 11 terminal, that's the white wire, that's for the tack. And that goes in a tachometer slot in the Decoder Digital box. Alright, so that's pretty much it. We're not going to use anything else on this side. The left and right signal already used. We're using the, one, the stock factory ones. And everything else is not being used. The only thing we have left is switch one and switch two, which we're going to do later once we put the cluster in. So right now, we're going to put the Cat5 cable. There's a Cat5 cable that plugs into this in the back here. And remember, this is the, this is the connector with the left-right indicators. So, I'm gonna go ahead and run this Cat5 now through here in the back. All right, the Cat5 cable goes on this slot over here. That's good. All right, now put this in. That's good. And put this in. And that's good. And put the dash in place. Okay. Make sure nothing's in the way. Okay, now I'm going to put the torx headed screws in and tighten the whole cluster in place. And the last one here, and it's all in. Okay, now this is a panel underneath the steering column. We're going to put these two momentary switches in there. I already put one in. You just got to put it through the back and tighten this down with this ring. So, I have my step drill bit here ready. Go ahead and drill this out. So now you just pop this in from behind. The Greek way, baby. And tighten this down. And that's good. You got switch one and switch two. Alright, so what I did here was I put an eyelid here with an extra ground and that's going to be wired to the switches. Slide this over. The wire is going to come on top. It's good. 
All right, so I'm zip tying this computer up by the steering column nice and snugly, snugly wuggly, and that should be good. Okay, so everything is nicely zip tied underneath. You have access to everything, and these wires are for the switches. Okay, I got the wires here routed for uh, when I put the switches on the other panel. And this is going to go in like that. The light goes in here. Let's go ahead and screw this in. Okay, so this is the main ground wire. And one wire from each switch is going to this butt connector. And we're going to connect this wire here. So whenever you press one switch, it grabs this ground and puts it to the controller. And the same thing with the switch. Let's go ahead and clip that on. So this is switch one. And this is switch two. All right, so we had the car running a little bit. Let me show you what it looks like. And when you shut the light off, voila, isn't she a beauty? Water temperature is good, oil pressure is good. Let's start up and check real quick for any leaks. No leaks for the water sender. And no leaks in the back down there, but we put the oil pressure switch on the sender. Okay, now we have to set the speedometer, the odometer, the fuel sender, and the tack. Okay, we're gonna set we're gonna set up the fuel sender now. So they want you to press and hold switch one while you turn the key on, then scroll through until you go to the setup fuel. Okay, I'm holding switch one. Gonna set up, release it, click, set up tack, set up volts, set up water, set up oil, set up fuel. Now I'm gonna hold switch one up, fuel sender, I let go, hold the switch down, sender custom, GM30, GM90, so I'm just gonna hold this down. That's what we have, GM90. Hold it. Done. Yeah. Okay, so that should be good. Let me shut it off. Start the car and see what happens. Oh, fuel level. Perfect. So fuel set up. Woohoo! Okay, now we do the tack. Holding, uh, holding uh, switch one and gonna put it in the on position, the key. Go into setup. Set up tack, hold that down. Tack engine, tack signal. Now hold that down. Signal, 12 volt high. Yeah, I'm gonna pick 12 volt high for this car. Done. Okay, now we can do tack engine to get the number of cylinders. Click on this, hold it down, switch one. We're in engine. Engine's eight, so I'm gonna hold the switch down on this. All right, hold that down, it's done. Okay, the tack is working. All right, now to set the speedometer up, you have to go into the settings, you have to auto calibrate the speed, the speed sensor, and you have to follow somebody for about a mile, then you hit switch one, and uh, you should have uh, the, the speedometer set. So we're just doing that now and drive around for a mile. Okay, I'm doing 20 miles an hour and with a GPS, 21, 22 now. I have a little bit of a heavy foot, but the speedometer is calibrated. All right, so let me show you a few features of this thing. If you hit switch two, you have RPMs there. You have the clock, obviously. High speed, zero to 60, quarter mile speed, quarter mile time. 
So that's pretty good. You get a few functions here with this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and set the odometer reading. And there's a bunch of stuff you could do here. I'm not gonna go through everything, but it's all detailed instructions. And this is actually pretty good, pretty cool system. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, like me, share me. Also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, Clowny1969. Toodles!